Hello and welcome to another edition of On a Roll with Kerwin Brown. I'm your host. And today uh, I have the honor of getting to sit down with Fred Springer, who uh, is being inducted into the Dayton Hall of Fame. So great opportunity to kind of sit down with Fred, who I've known for a long, long time, and uh, just chat about, you know, the industry and Hall of Fame and all that yeah. kind of stuff. So, uh, Fred, uh, welcome. And uh, we you. will start with, uh, I like to do kind of a this or that, so I'll, I'll ask you some questions. Uh, cake or pie? Pie. Pie, all right. Donuts, bagels, croissants, you have a favorite? Croissants. Uh, sausage or bacon? Both. Both. Uh, that is the best answer I've heard in a while. Uh, uh, I think I know the answer to this one, but uh, beach or mountains? Beach. Yeah, every time. And uh, football, basketball? Football. Uh, and any uh, favorite baked goods that you just like, I can't wait to have a great baked good. I, I'm sorry. I, baked good. Like you, oh, baked good. You'd say, oh, I just have a really hunger for war. What would that be? Probably a croissant. Croissant. Yeah. A fresh croissant. Yeah. So, uh, and I'm sure, I mean, you've traveled all over the world. So did you find a great pastry or something at some point that you loved in some country? Baklava. Baklava. Yeah. So. Love it. Uh, all right. We're, we're going to talk, kind of shift over to half of bacon. So. Okay. Uh, you were president of, of Burford for, for many, many years. Uh, you probably didn't sit around in high school thinking, I'm going to run a company one day that, you know, that makes twist ties and cedars and, and all that. Right. So kind of what, what was your path? Why baking? Well, when I graduated from uh, college, University of Oklahoma, I didn't know what I wanted to do. And Debbie and I took a trip for three weeks just to kind of see. I had several offers. Was CPA firms. I graduated with a major in accounting, and at the time, I, after I had interviewed with them, I decided that wasn't what path I wanted. And when I got back from my trip, I had a, a card from the uh, university saying Burford was looking for uh, somebody to come as assistant controller. That was 1973, and I went down, interviewed, and I loved it. Thought yeah. this is something else. You know the story about. You know, Mr. Burford designed the, the uh, Baylor uh, Nodder assembly right. and the twist tie machine. I was just flabbergasted. And I huh. thought, this is for me. So anyway, I started there and uh, just got more involved with uh, everything. You know, the, we designed equipment and right. going through all that. With, with I love staying late with engineers out there looking at watching what they're doing and right. getting involved. and. Then uh, going to the first bakery was in Oklahoma City uh, on a trial was, was a great experience. So, and you were sort of I've heard stories about you know you had a Mustang I think early on you were kind yeah. of a gear, were you kind of a gearhead so you liked to have yeah. things work. I yeah, guess. I did. I loved it. Uh, you know, I grew up kind of in my dad's business, and uh, we were always tinkering with something. And right. you know, I had a '62 Chevy that we took oh, the, the engine out right. back in and. Uh, then I eventually wound up with a Shelby GT500 and uh, had all kinds of motorcycles. We always messing with those. Right. I had a 58 Cushman Eagle that was uh, quite a quite a machine. But uh, so. well, we are in the Burford Suite or kind of Burford Suite North, right behind us is the Burford Suite, and, and you know been a part of that Burford Suite for for you know probably most of my career, 30 years or so, and. You know, I think the Burford Suite, if you look at it, is sort of a, a microcosm of our industry. It's people together having fun, conducting business, all that. Uh, but it took a long time to get to where it was today so popular. Yeah. It, it's such a just a phenom in our industry. So it didn't start out like that. So what no. did you have a like dream about the Burford Suite and what it was going to be one day? Or Yeah, we, when we first decided we were going to have a suite, we... Uh, had that dream of it being exactly what it is now right but how do you get it there and i, I have to give the credit to Teresa ruder she when i hired her we'd had it for i don't know four or five years and it was just almost floundering and i thought either we're going to make it happen or get rid of it and she said i'll make it happen and so it just evolved from there we had got to where we had meetings in there 
the ATB I past president's meeting. I think we had some it's meetings in there. there. Uh, and she would make all these snacks and all that. But the big draw was in the evenings uh, with their LCR. And uh, we, I think we started out with poker, but then we went to LCR. And, uh, people just fight for a chair to, at the table to, to get in for that. Yeah. But it's the getting together, the bakers, the allies, and everybody you know, sitting around having a drink and visiting with each other and talking about this story or that story and uh, just a place to gather. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's such, it's a can't miss. Uh, uh, you've done, so you started there early out of your career. Yeah. You've done lots of different things, all that. So uh, maybe a funny story about, you know, either something not great or funny or something you learned over yeah. your career there at Berkeley. Well, you know, I think that there's a lot of stories, but I think the one that kind of sticks in my mind, and and it's a lesson as well, but uh, we had a project that was going real well and here in the States, and we were trying to get it in over in Europe, and we had a bakery in the UK that had actually corporate decided, yeah, we'll give that a try. So they give us the toughest bakery to put it in, and the corporate engineer, he didn't like anything new, absolutely nothing new. And so I'd send an engineer over to measure everything because we had to cut part of their conveyor out to fit ours in and everything just right. And so I I sent my people over to install it. And my sales manager and I, the guy called and said, I want to have a meeting that morning. I said, well, we want to to go by and talk to our people. He said, I want you to come to my meeting first. So we went to the meeting and sat down with him and went through how great we were and all the things Burford could do. He just sat there, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. Okay. And we, after we got through with our coffee and biscuits, he said, uh, have you talked to your guys this morning? I said, no. So we're going to go out and see them when we get through here. He said, your conveyor is an inch too short. It ain't going to work. And I said, Oh, my God. He said, what are you going to do about it? I said, we're going to fix it. I said, he said who's going to fix it? I said, my guys are going to fix it. He said, you got my conveyor. I said, we're going to fix your conveyor until I get a new one right. sent over. We sent a brand new one over and installed it. Everything was great. And he and I have had laughs about that. You know, he, so it, it kind of turned a guy that was kind of rough and crunchy to a really, really good friend. Right. Uh, overall. Uh Definitely persevering and making it right. You know, making that right. persevering, That's making it. things right. Sometimes you get a stronger customer than if you just would have, you know, stayed on the. Uh, so uh, I'm going to ask you about the volunteer side. So, you know, when you look at your career, you have been involved with literally every organization in the industry, right. uh, led, I think, everyone in the industry. Uh, and so, and then, you know, early on, some of my close friends, were guys that you pushed out. You said, you got to get out there, you volunteer, you do it, you know, you get to be involved and be on boards and, you know, right. volunteer on committees, do whatever. And I kind of look back going, why? Like, some people would say, I'm not doing that because my guy, I'll lose my guys or, you know, they'll be away from work or whatever. But you really pushed it. So why would you do that? Did you have a mentor? Or? I did. Okay. I did. When, early on in my career, uh, one of the first associations I was involved with, I met Bill McCurry, and a long time, great, great friend, and great industry guy. Uh, we were talking, and he, he said, "It's good that you're in a, getting involved." And he said, "But I'm going to tell you." He said, "Stay involved. Get involved with every association you can." He said, "You're going to meet bakers in a way from those associations that you'll never be able to meet them on a sales call." Uh, and it was so true. Uh, you, you, you become friends with them, you know, like with BMO. Uh, you know, I've got Baker friends that uh, our, our kids are friends with their kids. And, right. you know, I never got that from a sales call. Right. Or going in selling a piece of equipment in the bakery or whatever. But that's one of the, and so I encourage all of my guys, get in there and get involved and you got to start early, but make something happen. You know, right. don't just be a, part of the committee, you know, try to try to go through the chairs, go through everything. And, you know, I, I, I've been so fortunate to have so many great guys that 
that worked for me that, that, that have done that. They uh, wanted to make a difference. They wanted to make a difference. They saw it. Yeah. They've been program chairs. They've, they've done all yeah. that. So, yeah, you definitely live that. And so, you know, as a person that runs a, a volunteer of trade association, yeah. it's, it's it's our lifeblood. If we didn't have it, we, we wouldn't even exist. So it's, sure. a, it's an important part. Uh, again, you've traveled everywhere. Yeah. Tons of, I don't know how many countries you've been in. Uh, I remember celebrating your birthday. Uh, I think Eva was always around your birthday. Yeah. So we've celebrated your birthday in other countries. So uh, any favorite country that you went to in all those in all those travels? Yeah, probably Dusseldorf would be one of my favorites but as far as that. Besides England, uh, about everywhere in England it is uh, that I love. But Dusseldorf during October, or not during October, that's in Munich, but during Eva and during Eva going to and Oslo all that. And yeah. having uh, a, a small beer. Sell my, celebrate my birthday there. And celebrate your birthday yeah. in this group. Uh, uh, last is, you know, again, celebrating your Hall of Fame. And, uh, you know, you've got, uh, we, have, we have the French for your Lifetime Achievement Award at uh, BEMA. You've done the uh, Bob Fisher. Bob you've Fisher, yeah. that. Uh, what is being in the Baking Hall of Fame, you know, sort of, tugs at your heartstrings i know it, so it really it, does it really does it's it, it's a very humbling experience when i was on the hall of fame committee for about i don't know 10 12 years maybe more uh and doing the voting for all all the people that went in and you know you look at everything they've achieved and accomplished and all that but to now for the reality that i'm being inducted it, it's really a humbling experience well, we're here to celebrate you, and thanks for being a part of, my, of the podcast, yeah. and uh, it's going to be a fun couple of days. Yeah, great. Right. Thanks, Gary. Uh, thanks for being a part of this uh, chapter of On a Roll uh, with Kerwin Brown and Fred Springer, and we'll see you next time.